All right, everyone. So Sophia and I wanted to bring you this video and some information that we have been going through lately about stress and specifically about recovery, sleep, and breathing, and how it impacts, influences, and can actually enhance your recovery from stressful situation and stress that has been applied. So, Sophia, thank you so much for hopping on here with me. Thanks for having me. So for those of you who don't know, Sophia is a wonderful athletic trainer. She currently works at a high school in, in a hospital and she is one of the Be Heard contributors and has been doing a bunch of extra things on the side, learning yoga, enhancing her own knowledge. And so her and I wanted to really bring some information about this thing called stress. So Sophia, what's <laughs> the thing that we should start off with? Because it's a whole thing. <laughs> all right. So I kind of wanted to center all of this around stress just because we're all stressed right now. This mm -hmm. is weird times and even outside of these times we all handle stress differently we all experience different kinds of stress um so i want to start off with just pointing out that there are different kinds of stress there's physical stress so working out um having like a physically labor laborious job um mental stress emotional stress so those are all different kinds of stresses that we can be dealing with it's not always just I have to be here at this time and I have to be there at this time and all of these different things that we think about stress, it's physical, mental, and emotional. So um, all this recovery and sleep and breathing can help with all of these things. Um, so you, you want to just start with recovery? Yeah, and I think it's important to point out that these stretches, stresses that we're mentioning, um, they're going to happen no matter what, right? Because if- yes doing a workout, like it's not bad that we have this stress applied to our body. In fact, in most cases, it's good. It's just how do we manage that stress? How do we optimize and recover from the stress that occurs in our life? Because I don't know about you, mental, emotional, physical stress, stress happens all the time. It's just yes. you and I manage it and then cope with it or enhance our lives from it. So yeah, let's jump right into it. So let's talk about recovery first, because that's a big one. Um, so one of the things I was thinking about with recovery as I was going back over my notes is um, the, the big thing right now is self-care and self-love. And that is so much recovery. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to uh, stress that. Haha, <laughs> stress. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to stress that. Um, doing all of those things that were like, yes, I'm going to take a bath tonight. I'm going to sit down and do my nails or once we're able to go out and have my nails done or get my hair done and take some time for myself or go running as your self-care. Um, those are all parts of recovery from, that could be from physical recovery or mental recovery or emotional. Um, so all of these different kinds of recovery are going to be specific to you, um, your needs, your likes, your dislikes. Mm -hmm. um, so we're not going to get into anything too terribly specific of how to handle all of this recovery, but just know that if there's something that's working for you right now, keep doing it. That's really good for you. Um, one of the things that I really picked up from this about recovery was that it's not always about overtraining. So for example, uh, we're both runners, so I'm probably going to use a lot of running analogies. <laughs> um, it's not always about, I've been running 50 miles a week for the last five weeks and my legs are just shot. It could just be, I've been running too much for the amount of recovery I'm not doing. Mm -hmm. so it yes. could be overtraining or overstressing instead of not recovering. And I love that because it applies to the athlete, to the recreational athlete, to the moving mom, to the moving woman, to just life in general, right? Because if you're overtraining, you're overstressing your body and you're not, you're exactly right. You're under recovering. You're under taking care of yourself. You're under nurturing yourself, holding that space for you it's going to come out in the things that you're trying to do, the things that you're trying to accomplish. So like running, like you say, if we don't take a break, if we don't optimize and re 
replenish and restore our body, it's going to show up in our performance. And no, I love the way that you put it because overtraining, yes, we can do that. But also under recovery, under utilizing that tool that we have is going to decrease our performance overall. Um, we mentioned how that has to do, or we talk, learned about how that has a lot to do with the autonomic nervous system. So let's talk about right. that because that's a huge factor. Okay, so for those people who are not familiar with the autonomic nervous system, aren't super anatomy nerd freaks like we are, um, the autom autonomic nervous system is part of um, our peripheral nervous system. So not our central nervous system, our, our brain and our brain stem, it's everything else out here. Um, so the ANS has the sympathetic and the parasympathetic um, branches to it. So you've probably heard of the, the sympathetic nervous system. It's our fight or flight. Um, our PNS, our uh, peripheral nervous system, is known as our rest and digest. Um, so clearly any kind of stresses, workouts, whatever, are going to be that fight or flight while all of our recovery is going to be on the rest and digest which I thought was really important to that whole seminar that we went to because it was all around sleep and recovery and all that kind of stuff, which is all about resting and digesting and digesting the good things. <laughs> no, and that's perfect because, yeah, we look at the parasympathetic, the sympathetic nervous systems. We look at how, you know, there's an on switch and an off switch. And a lot of us, we get stuck in that fight or flight. And yes. especially if we are not optimizing our recovery, we're not managing that stress appropriately, we get to live in that sympathetic, that on all the time space. And we never flip over to having that rest and digest nervous system being turned on and us being able to chill out, which a lot of people, they get kind of confused because they're like, why would I want to turn on this nervous system? because that's how you turn off and calm down and recover. Yeah. Um, there's a, that little dichotomy there, but it's, it's really important that we take that chance to turn off one and flow into the other one in order to recover optimally. And I like how you said that about, um, you can think about how stress and recovery are opposites, right? Yeah. And yeah, so... If you, if you think about like the yin and yang symbol, mm -hmm. like you can have all of this stress, but you still need a little bit of um, recovery or you can have all this recovery, but you still need a little bit of stress or you can't have one without the other. Otherwise you're unbalanced and balancing is really important right. in all aspects of your life. Right. And it's all about finding that optimized place for you because one person might be able to thrive in a certain balance or a certain optimization of that yin and that yang that you put. Um, whereas others, they need a little bit more of a 50-50, maybe. And right. It's a little right. bit of one and a lot of another. So that's why it's really important whenever you're working with a coach or with your, if you're working on yourself, to make sure that you're taking your internal um, nervous system temperature of sorts, just to make sure that you're <laughs> finding that space that you go into. Um, no, I love that. That's a good point. So one way that we can influence our autonomic nervous system is through sleep and breathing. Yes. Um, so I'm just going to start with sleep. So every system in our body is influenced by sleep. Um, it's a huge life enhancer for any goal you're trying to achieve. Um, it's one of the easiest and cheapest mechanisms to help you recovery. It's like some of the lowest fruit on that tree of recovery um, mm -hmm. that you can get um, in terms of like having really special um, supplements or specific techniques or trainings that you go to or mm -hmm. even just education. Like the lowest of the low is get your sleep right? Mm -hmm. We hear that all the time, get your sleep, mm -hmm. um, which can be hard for some people. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I know I'm getting some of the best sleep of my life right now because I don't have um, a, a hard schedule to stick to. I can mm -hmm. say, okay, I 
don't have to get up at 5 a.m. I'm going to go to sleep at midnight when I'm comfortable with it, and I'm going to wake up at 8 a.m. when I'm comfortable with it, and I'm getting my full eight hours of sleep. Not everybody has that luxury right now, um, especially you, children, you know. <laughs> right, yeah, um, just throw that one into the mix, right? <laughs> yeah, no biggie, it's fine. Um, but again, sleep is just, it's, it's the root of all of our recovery. And I love that because you mentioned, you know, you can trial the tips and tricks. A big thing, you know, in the industry is talking about biohacks. How can we biohack the body? How can we uh, enhance what we're doing? And it's so funny whenever you go back and you're like, well, how's your sleep? And they're like, what? I mean, I have this cool gadget. Come on. And then you talk about, okay, so what are you doing for over half of your life? You're sleeping. So we need yes. that is optimal because if we are having these stretch stressors, whether physical, emotional, uh, mental, we need time to heal. And that healing and that growth that we get from whatever stress was applied happens in the sleep. Right. And you can't get that from anything else. You, mm -hmm. you can't substitute sleep for an extra coffee in the morning or an extra supplement after your workout to help you and recover. And I can say I've tried. I can say I've tried. <laughs> There's only so much that can help. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, sleep is just the best thing ever. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I mean, everybody has probably experienced this, but you know, falling asleep in the afternoon for a little nap and you wake up and you're like, gosh, I feel amazing right now. Or after you run a really hard race, you're like, oh, this was the best nap ever. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm officially a new woman. Yep. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> yes. I have accomplished this and now I have accomplished my nap. I am the most accomplished woman in the world right now. <laughs> I love it. So let's talk about just briefly the circadian rhythm for those who don't know that because it is an important factor in the quality of our sleep and in sleep in general. So one thing I learned from this, because um, I, I don't have a strong history in sleep and the study and all that kind of stuff, um, this, your circadian rhythm is not your biological clock. Your circadian rhythm takes cues from your biological clock. I did not know that. It was something I learned. Um, your biological clock is cued off of light and dark cycles. So if you think back to our ancestors that didn't have clocks or alarms or anything. They had a rooster on their farm that would wake them up when the sun came up. Um, that's what our internal clock goes off of. Um, so our circadian rhythm also feeds off of that. Over time, we have gotten more light, like this thing mm -hmm. up here, because <laughs> we have the joys of electronics and electricity and all of the things that come with it. Um, but what we lose with that is our natural light and dark cycles. Um, so your circadian rhythm will clearly inf influence your wake and sleep. Um, it also influences your best exercise timing and your food timing. Um, but what, really, what I really wanted to focus on with the sleep is how there's a peak, like a, a difference between our circadian rhythm and like our level of tiredness. Mm -hmm. And as that grows, th this is our ideal time to go to bed. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. If, if we start letting this curve go back up, and this gap is smaller now as we've gone mm -hmm. along. Or, you know, we take a drink of coffee or something and we try and adjust this well our, our gap's not getting any smaller we've lost our ideal time to go to sleep um so that really stresses our body in not being able to fall asleep well or stay asleep um outside of lots of those other modifiable things mm -hmm. um just that you know, circadian rhythm right and i don't know if you've done this before but where you have kind of pushed back, like you've gotten tired. Say it's like nine, 10 o'clock and you're like, oh my goodness, my body is tired. I need to go sleep. But I have this show that I want to watch or this thing that I need to <laughs> yes. pass that. And then it's like this no man's land of where you go to sleep finally, maybe a couple hours later and you're wide awake. And you're like, my body uh -huh. is so tired, but I can't sleep. That's what we're talking about here, ladies. So this is that... Kind of where it's, it's, I love that 
demonstration that you said where it starts to narrow back in. It starts to curve back up and you meet this point of like, uh-oh, we missed that window. It'll come back again. You will fall asleep. That's, that's not the issue. It's just we're exactly. trying to hit that optimal point. Yeah. Um, so the one thing I want to mention with this is um, how a lot of these things are behavioral. Mm -hmm. um, are, are or modification. So even just changing what time to go to sleep is a behavior. Um, so that's one way that we can change like our recovery. Um, how, how we recover is just changing the time of what time I go to bed. <laughs> Those little bitty things. <laughs> exactly. And another little bitty thing that we want to touch on that is funny, you're like, this is the biggest thing, the thing that gets you folks excited. Breathing's mine. Like, sleep is yours, breathing is mine. I am a fan of breathing. If anybody knows me, they know about that. And it's a key factor in stress and managing stress and optimizing and leveraging our stress to our advantage. So let's talk about that because it's a fun one to talk about. And like Absolutely. it's behavioral and we can control a lot of it. So let's dive in there. Um, so my, my one thing that I learned from this section <laughs> is that um, we all think about breathing and it's like our rib cages are expanding, our, our bellies are expanding when we're taking good belly breaths. Um, but something I didn't think about or haven't been educated on yet is that our pelvis is also included in respiration. Um, so when you take a nice deep breath, your pelvis also has to expand mm -hmm. at the same time as your rib cage and like your organs move around and they kind of get squished and like twisted and all kinds of things in a good way. <laughs> Not that you've got your stomach in knots, but um, that, that was no, very and interesting that's true. to me. And that's so true. I'm going to hop in here and say that because it's not, it, yeah, it puts that pressure. It's called, you know, intra-abdominal pressure is created whenever you take an inhalation, right? Um, but the coolest part about breathing is that it's a self-massage of internal organs and musculature, and it goes all the way down into your pelvis. So that's why it's key whenever you're educating women about their body, about their core, about their pelvic floor, about different stressors or um, even sport activities, is that you mentioned that it affects all the way down into that pelvis. Yes. And I love how you mentioned that because it's not just about the rib, rib cage, it's about the whole entire unit. And if it's not optimally, you know, if you're not breathing optimally, you're not getting that entire unit functionally, functionally how it's supposed to be functioning. And so therefore your performance is inhibited, you're not going to get as efficient of a breath. And so that's why we talk about breathing so much because it is about so much more than the inhale and the exhale, breathing into the ribs or whatever, you know, the situation might be. It is about so much more. Right. I want to bring this back a little bit to our stress, like mm. our stress can affect our breathing. Yes. Um, so one thing you can do when you're, when you're having a tough conversation with someone, not that we want to be having those, but mm. if you watch how somebody's breathing, their breathing is affected by how much stress they're taking on. So if they're, if they're really like anxious or having a really hard time talking about whatever it is they're talking about, you'll, they're start taking like really shallow breaths right here. Mm. So their entire they're in their fight or flight mm -hmm. um, versus we want to bring them back down into our rest and digest where breathing can help facilitate that. So um, our vagus nerve comes down from the brain through our thoracic cage and it has a hole that it goes through in our diaphragm, which is our breathing muscle. Um, and by breathing, you're stimulating that muscle. And that's connected back to our um, ANS again. Mm -hmm. And that's a good connection because we want that big breath to go all the way down into the pelvis to massage those organs for that vagus nerve to be stimulated appropriately and to be able to regulate that stress and kind of turn on that off switch that we talked about earlier, turn on the PNS, that rest and digest. Uh, it's... I talk about, I want you to focus, uh, tell people about the pumping motion because it kind of helps people give that visual about what's going on. 
Okay, so think about inflating a balloon and you have other tiny balloons inside of it. So if you're inflating that, you're allowing more space to happen. And when you relax, it kind of, it squishes things. So we all know we have internal organs. They're kind of all over the place. They have a specific place they're supposed to be, um, that they're all held together with fascia. Um, typically when we think about fascia in the athletics world, we're thinking about um, doing some massage to help relieve that uh, myofascial uh, junction or um, do using a foam roller, <laughs> um, but we can do that with our internal organs as well because they are connected with fascia. So using that ability to kind of churn them and move them around helps stimulate those organs as well, helps keep them healthy. Um, if there's anything at, at he hearing to each other, it can help break that up a little bit, help them move a little bit, just like your muscles do. So our, our organs don't we can't say I'm going to flex my stomach or I'm going to make my spleen shift over here, um, <laughs> but we still need them to move. So breathing in different positions. So I can sit here and breathe like this in an upright position and still get that movement. Or I can move into like a, a twist and that's going to get a different way to stimulate those organs and get them to move and get them a different kind of squish. Mm -hmm. um, and same thing with different positions like if you're um, laying down versus sitting up or um, on your hands and knees chasing your toddler around and you're breathing in that position that's going to give you some different stimulation as well there um, it also creates cerebrospinal flow so we have fluid that sits around our spinal cord um, that goes all up and down our spinal cord and that's also part of our vital organs that are getting benefit from this breathing. So again, all those muscle, those organs being shifted around are going to create some pressure and squish on things and allow that flow to keep going. And that cerebrospinal fluid goes up into our brains too. So just breathing that movement, so we have a physical effect on our brain from breathing, not just adding oxygen to our brain. And I love that because it shows us how many things breathing affects, but not only that, bringing it back to stress, having that organ massage, that organ movement due to the breath, and then also stimulating, stimulating that flow of the fluid throughout our spinal cord into the brain can again regulate that stress because you're, it's all about breathing in good, oxygen and replenishing our body, replenishing our muscles. So not only does that for the physical part, but also for the mental and emotional part too. Um, you know, a common thing for breath practice or improving our breath, something like meditation practice or even like a breathing practice, starting to just intentionally focus on breathing alone, maybe in different postures, like you just said in yoga, where you're doing chair twist or maybe a revolved twist or even sitting cross-legged versus being all fours, this all just stimulates different responses. It stimulates different tissues, stimulates different organs just to allow it to revert back to that rest and digest, bringing it back, turning on that off switch, letting those organs and those tissues know that they're good. <laughs> And they can recover from whatever it might have been that triggered that stressor. Right. Um, and just to connect breathing back to sleep, um, breathing exercises are a great way, way to help you get to sleep or add to your sleep routine um, to help stimulate that um, autonomic nervous system um, to guide you into that sleep. Um, I know one of the big things right now is um, using different apps to help you go to sleep where there's different sounds to help you calm down. They're all nice and calm sounds. Uh, but adding breathing to that is a huge enhancement on top of those things and can help you get to sleep and help you get over your stressors better beyond sitting and focusing and meditating on your breath. Um, you can integrate that into your sleep habits as well. 
Oh, I love that because it all nicely fits together. Um, you have the stress, you have the, you have the tools that you need to combat that stress with your recovery, with your sleep, with your breathing and doing these simple things can help us overcome the stress, both good and bad, <laughs> really just get back to our lives, get back to what we need to do, refreshed and restored. Well, thank you for coming on here with me and for chatting with me about this. I know that the ladies will enjoy this, the women listening and men, and hopefully they can take home some key points from this. Yes, I loved getting this education, and I'm so glad that we can share this with everybody. Alrighty, well, um, I guess that we will sign off for now, and we will chat with you soon, okay? All right.